The transition at the top of the Pentagon will add another name to the list of actings at the Defense Department. Army Secretary Mark Esper will become the acting Defense Secretary this week, and that means an acting Army Secretary will become necessary. To look at the leadership terrain at the Defense Department, Lieutenant General Tom Spore, U.S. Army retired, Director of the Center for National Defense at the Heritage Foundation, and Melanie Sisson, Senior Fellow and Director of the Defense Strategy and Planning Program at the Stimson Center. Thanks both very much for joining me this morning. Melanie, I'll start with you. What's your reaction to what's happening at the Pentagon, the top of the leadership suite? Well, obviously, it's the addition of more turmoil. Um, I think it's a shame that we got to the point of having a nominee. I think Shanahan has done a fine and competent job in this role for a very long period of time. It's understandable that he wants to um, prevent further strain on his family. Um, Though I will say, uh, you know, again, to, to get this far in the process and, and have to retrench now, I think, doesn't bode well for the process generally. And it's a shame that someone who's be performed as well as he has um, faces this at this particular time. Tom? Yeah, I, I agree with Melanie. I think it's far from ideal to have all these acting people in the higher echelons of the Pentagon, particularly at the Secretary of Defense level. As we enter into these appropriations and authorizations bills in Congress, the Pentagon needs a strong advocate and acting while the could be the best person as the acting, they don't have that full confidence that the president uh, bestows. And that's the same challenge that uh, the acting anybody is up against when they go on to the world stage, too. There were questions about the forcefulness of the message, how it would be received by China and other countries in Asia. When Secretary Shanahan was at the Shangri-La Dialogue a couple of weeks ago, this just exacerbates that challenge, doesn't it, Melanie? I think so. You know, I also will say, though, this is very status quo for the administration at this point. This is not unique to, to the Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. um, we see it in other agencies as well. And so while certainly it would be far preferable not to have actings um, sort of down the, the ladder the way that it currently stands, I also will say what concerns me more is if we're going to continue to have actings, that they be really good professionals, that mm -hmm. we have confidence in their abilities and that they can perform well on the job. So I'm, I'm in the place of, again, sort of accepting that this is going to be the standard. Um, and then the question becomes, who are you choosing for those roles mm -hmm. um, and what longevity can they have? Well, and the longevity is an issue, Tom because the administration is up against the calendar, as I talked about with Congressman Whitman. President Trump, even if he's reelected, his first term ends in about 18 months. The soonest that people expect a SECDEF nominee or a nominees for any of these other jobs that we talked about, a few of them before we went on the air, is September, maybe November, a lot more likely, and that person or people only have a year or so guaranteed in those positions. What does that mean for the broader national yeah. security community? So, so that's a problem. You know, who is going to want to give up a career in some other industry to come in to be a, at a cabinet level or, or lower level official for some period less than 18 months? It's not very many people want to give up with that. And so I think that's a, an issue. And, it, and, you know, you mentioned about uh, Secretary Shanahan going to Shangri-La, you know, Mark Esper now heading off to NATO, a NATO ministerial this week. Also the same kind of challenge. How does he convince his fellow ministers that he is actually representing the Department of Defense? Melanie, to your point about the, the people, the quality of the people, who is the kind of person that is willing to say, yes, I'll give up whatever I have for the next 18 months without certainty that the job will continue? Or do we expect to see a whole lot more acting people as attrition continues? Because we're, we're getting to that stage of the administration where people are going to start to check out. Yeah, I mean, I think that's an interesting question. What I would say is um, if I were guessing, and I, I wouldn't want to bet, but uh -huh. I might be willing to guess, um, I think um, Secretary Esper will be here probably for the duration, um, either in an acting or eventually sort of as the confirmed position. I don't see it personally, I don't see a better choice for some of the reasons that Tom mentioned, but also because, um, you know, uh, Secretary Esper does have um, a solid foundation. I think he has the respect of the department, he certainly has the respect of the Army. Um, and those things bode well for him. I think he has the temperament, the background, um, the knowledge, skills, and experience um, to, to do this and to do this well, even under these very uncomfortable and, I think, unusual circumstances. My next question was going to be, what qualities should this person have? You seem to have listed the ones that you think are important. Tom, what, uh, anything you want to add to that yeah. list that you think is important for I the do, candidate? I do, yeah. Here's what I'd like in a Secretary of Defense. I'd like someone that has some experience in leading a very large organization, so not a corner bodega, not a small office, but something big. And, and 
Mark Esper has that. He was a big corporate executive in Raytheon. Many are going to say, oh, not another in person with defense industry experience. I'm on the other side of that argument. I believe that you want somebody that comes in having led something big. You want somebody that can communicate with Congress effectively. Mark Esper has shown he can do that. And then uh, you want somebody that can just be a spokesman in general for the national security needs of the United States. And that has not really been something that we've seen a lot of in the last couple of years. We have about uh, a little bit more than a minute left, Melanie. How do you think this plays out? What, what's the timeline, the chain of events that you expect to see? Be as uh, precise or as imprecise as you care to be. Well, as I mentioned before, I'm unwilling to place bets or be held to predictions. Good. But my guess is that um, my guess is that if the administration is going to move on a nominee, it will be Secretary Esper. Um, and the timeline, um, I think, will depend on what is going on on the president's agenda otherwise in other places. He just kicked off his campaign again. Mm -hmm. um, that will demand some attention. Um, if Congress advocates um, enough to, to get the nomination process going sooner, then we may see the timeline that I believe your previous guest mentioned of uh, September or November, potentially. Um, and those would be fine outcomes. Tom, what do you expect to see? I'd like to see this happen a little quicker, particularly for the Secretary of Defense. So Mark Esper already has had background checks. They need to refresh those and look a little deeper. I'd like to see the Senate consider his nomination prior to the August recess. I think that's very doable, and I think there's one or two other Pentagon senior officials that could, could potentially be confirmed before they leave for their recess. Tom, Melanie, thanks both very much for joining us. Great to Thank have you.